some of this is probably repeat, but we're going to get into it. All right. So welcome everybody to Design Your Unstoppable Life. Who am I? I am Amy Shade and I have been a performer, a dancer, uh, an educator, a speaker, and a coach uh, for many years. And for the past 20 years, you know, I've been coaching others to really dig deep, use inquiry, and create curiosity so they themselves can be the designers of their life. And I, you know, we're going to talk today about vision and about where we're at now. We're going to talk about our vision and then we're going to talk about how to build that bridge. So I developed my ability to really create a vision. When I walked into a relationship with a man with three kids and an ex-wife and, you know, I walked into this and it was uh, chaotic for me, especially like I've never experienced anything like that before. And I was like, this is not going to work. So I really had to create a vision. And that vision for me was to have peace in that family, to create peace for that family. And I was able to really take that vision and really uh, create a lovely home that was safe most of the time, right? And less chaotic and, you know, really get people on the path of, is this really going to support peace this when you act this way or when you talk this way so how can we support peace in this um and i use some of those skills that i learned uh back then to teach you today so in 2011 my whole world blew up when my fiance passed away um it was quick it was like within six weeks he was gone and when he left he is like i was like an empty vessel it's like i was like i don't even know who i am uh without him and i thought i was strong and like independent but i realized you know what i really had to work on myself and i really had to work on my self-love and my confidence and then that's when i really became unstoppable and this also started like 2012 i went back to college and everything opened up for me in my mind my critical thinking skills my ability to really build my confidence and my ability to um, create the wherewithal to like get through three finals in one day right so you i started to build this this uh inner knowing that i was smart because i wasn't told i was smart as a kid and that i was uh i had resilience i was resilient and I was, uh, I was really um, in, focused on my goal. So that whole thing opened up my whole life because I had been a dance teacher for so many years. And I thought, this is not enough for me. I really want more. I want to create a, a different type of impact in my life. So in 2018, I got my coaching certification. Um, and that, that process itself and creating a vision there has really like catapulted me forward to where I am to you, with you today. It really just um, creating that vision changed everything for me. And yes, you deserve a seat at the table. I mean, sometimes we think we don't deserve a seat at the table, right? But you do. So you deserve to be here, whether you're an expert or a creator, uh, you, you're like a head of a household or a parent, a coach, a consultant, a teacher, um, a freelancer, an entrepreneur, a wife, a husband, partner, you deserve a seat at the table. And this is such a great workshop for you today. So today I'm going to show you how to get unstuck in your life so you can move forward. And I'm, I'm also going to ask that after this workshop, you're going to start taking committed action towards your vision. So put in the chat box, are you willing to do that? Let me know, I wanna hear. Where's my chat? 
Are you willing to do it? Put a yes. Do you have your chat box there? So why is this important to you right now? Maybe your life has drastically changed, which for most of us it has because of COVID. Uh, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed and like you don't know exactly which steps to take. Maybe you can't find the motivation to like really pursue that dream that you have. And what you might know is that the old way is no longer working. And I'm gonna ask this question, and you know, this is for all of us. It's like in the quiet hours of your life, have you ever said to yourself, wow, you know, I thought I'd be happier. I thought I would have figured it out by now. And if you thought this word, you are not alone. And this, this thought or this moment is such a great moment because you, that's where change begins. So the Design Your Unstoppable Life will give you the tools that you need to create a roadmap to the life of your dreams. Uh, so maybe you feel like you don't know where to even start. You know, maybe you don't know how to be happy in your, happy in your marriage anymore or how to get that your business off the ground or really get your business flourishing. Uh, maybe, you know, you, you don't really know how to create better relationships with your kids. You know, relationship, you know, you always have to switch up your relationship with the kids from like young, young adult to adult or from, you know, kid to teenager, or maybe, you know, you don't even really know how to find peace in your life anymore because you're so stressed out about your, your money situation or about COVID and, but maybe changing and growing and, and making those uh, decisions, maybe it feels too hard. You know, maybe it feels too vulnerable. Maybe you're angry or frustrated with your partner at this point. And you're just like, I don't even know if it's even possible to be happy. But I promise that you will learn today will set you free if you decide to implement these steps in your life. But don't take my word for it. So there's, uh, this is what I always say, you cannot do it alone. And this is Lolita, she's a fellow coach of mine. And you know, she says that I listen with intention and allow you to navigate in the space of discovery, which is really about what coaching's about. It's like having that curiosity. When you are with me, you have that space to really um, examine and question. As a coach, that's what that's that's a beautiful thing about coaching is you have that ability to find to discover it. And then Adele, she is a creator. She's a creative person, and um, I helped her with moving her career forward because um, she was stuck. And I guess with her because. She's like, no frills, no embellishments. That's pretty much me. I pretty much cut to the chase most of the time. And those who know me will say that's true. Um, and then there's Leslie. Leslie is a, a, a mom and she came to me with uh, empty nest. And now she's like wanting to get her writing back. And now she like wrote, a, you know, wrote a story and is going to make it into a screenplay. So you know, she was in that transition period of her young adult going off to college and she wanted to really um, figure out what was next for her, you know, in her life. So I'm fired about creating real results for you today. And because I know what it feels like to think that you don't deserve a seat at the table. And I know that showing your true self and not hiding is key to having a really beautiful, unstoppable life. And I know how great it feels to like walk into a room or even go on a date, right? Meet someone, show up exactly as who I am without hiding. And I know to how to ask for what I want without fear of the outcome. So this is what you're gonna learn today. You're gonna get real with your unstoppable life assessment. And then you're going to uh, declare your unstoppable high vision. 
we're going to go through strategies to get you unstuck and build a bridge, which is in the middle of that workshop, to your unstoppable life, okay? And then we're going to take uh, ways to take committed action today. And then three habits that will keep you from having an unstoppable life. So let's get real and take your unstoppable life assessment. All right, so let's see here. We have this paper here. Uh, that's your first worksheet. Okay, so this is what we do in coaching is that we, we give a number to everything. We give a scale to everything. Because sometimes we go through life, I think most of us go through life and, and we're just getting through our day, right? And most of us do not say, hmm, was today like a five or a seven? Was it a 10? Did I have a great day? So you're kind of when you, and if, if it is a five, how do I make it a 10, right? So we put numbers to many things. So as a coach, I can gauge what, you, what your middle ground is because the person's middle ground could be actually a seven, right? Like that could be their middle thing. Um, so as we find, we ask that you create uh, a numbering system for how you're feeling in that particular area of your life. And we also scale like one to 10, how important is this to you? And I'm gonna tell you that if you, if you tell me you're at a six, I'm going to tell you, it's not that important to you. And then if it's not that important to you, it's difficult to make the changes that you want in your life. So on here, it's like you have a one to 10, one being uh, your level of satisfaction is low and 10 being your, your level of satisfaction is high. So you have career, significant other, family, friends, um, finances, right? So from here, you just rate. You rate where you're at. Does anyone have like really low numbers somewhere? And if so, type it in the chat, like in what area? So like right now, maybe your um, significant other might be like a four and you want to improve on that. Or maybe your uh, fun and leisure, you want to really up your fun and leisure, uh, which many, many moms forget to have fun and leisure <laughs> out there. Um, you know, maybe self-love you're you're like uh i'm kind of like a five for self-love so as you rate rate as you rate these and you have a number to them it it kind of like and the thing about this also you have to be careful of is i shouldn't complain other people have it worse off there's out people out there really struggling. So then we end up putting numbers that are not true for us. So you have to be careful of that dialogue that you tell yourself. Because what you're telling yourself when you do that is that you are not as important as other people. And if you take that dialogue and you operate out of that dialogue, it's really hard to make changes in yourself because you're never as important. You're not the most important person in the room. And it's hard to move from that, from that dynamic. So when I do actually coach and get down, the people are like, no, this is really like a four. I just didn't want to complain. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> like, this is not about complaining. This is like really you like assessing, wow, where am I? And 
you know, don't project out about other people. Be careful about that because you, you are very important. In fact, you're the most important person here. Because when you take that on, you have the power to help others. You have the power to live like in your own self. And then people will look at you and want to do that. You're, you'd be like a great example of that. But until you go in deep and really give yourself a, a really honest assessment, right? You're not being honest with yourself. So once we're here and you have something that you want to improve in your life there is the journaling part which is you are going to say exactly where you're at in that er one area of your life that you want to improve so the other day i was having lunch with a friend who was having trouble in their relationship and you know she's probably at a zero or a one, right? And, you know, it's important for her to write down exactly why she's at a zero, exactly why it's not working. And it can't come from the perspective, well, he does this and he does that. It's more like, I am unsatisfied in this relationship. I am not getting my needs met. I am feeling like I'm not being respected, right? So all these things that you write here and journal about, about that one area of your life is very important that you get really honest with yourself. You know, you can say our communication is off. We're not communicating as a couple. Uh, we're no longer friends. Um, you know, we're, we're no longer intimate. We're not laughing anymore together. You know what I mean? Like whatever this is for you, you, it has to be real. So you're going to go really strong, really honest in this section. Okay. Because until, and this is what had to happen. Like the details, right? The details are out here. <laughs> She's telling me the details of her unhappiness and it's fast and it's spinning. Well, he does this and I was like, slow down, take a breath and tell me, are you happy? Like you have to get really into that, uh, into yourself and ask yourself, am I really happy here? This could be for your job too, because we can complain all day and the complaints are all in our, our brain and our head, but the truth is really in our heart. So if you journal about it, journal from your heart center, like journal from the way you really feel about things, journal from your wants and desires instead of complaints. And get really real with yourself about what's going on in that situation. So who has low numbers somewhere and then wants to put it in the chat? Anyone want to volunteer their, their areas that they'd like to improve on? Now, I want you to take your pen out and I want you to write one thing. I want you to make a declaration and the declaration is what, declare what you are no longer willing to do anymore. So 
it could be like I'm just gonna use relationship. It could be like with my with your husband or partner. You're like you know, I'm no longer willing to lose my temper with him, or I'm no longer willing for the career stuff to complain about my work. I'm no longer willing to um, not say yes when someone said when someone asked me, you know, to go have fun. So what are you no longer willing to do? Make a declaration, like one declaration. So you put acting, yeah. So your number two is your acting career as number two. So you're gonna, it's, you're gonna get really uh, specific with, with uh, where you're at right now with that. So do you wanna tell us where you're at? Unmute yourself and tell us and then I'll take you to your high vision in your acting career. Sure. Um, so, it's kind of funny because when I filled out the form, I, I under career, I put like a nine or a 10 because I have exciting things going on with my academic career, mm -hmm. but that's not the real career that's in my heart and it okay. never has been. And I've always kept the acting stuff going and I've created a lot of projects just so that I could continue to act. Um, and now I'm going to, I'm retiring. So I'm going to be able to actually pursue an acting career again, but I feel like, Oh, I should, you know, I shouldn't even, I'm like embarrassed by that. And I feel like I'm too old and write it all down. I'm, I'm ashamed that I haven't been able to do that so far. And I've tried really hard and I never had an agent and I just have so much like failure around it mm -hmm. other than one really great success for a nice chunk of time, but not nothing after that, you know? Mm -hmm. So Anything else? I'm, I have one thing to say, but um, I'll wait. Sure. So, so what else? Tell me about what else is going on with your acting career right now. Like what else? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, I have had. I have not tried to pursue it, other than well, I did a play like two two years ago, and I haven't really. I, I haven't been able to pursue it since then. Although I, I've written. I'm. I've kind of turned into writing another project that I would like to be in. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't be in it when I went to New York to do the project because I needed to direct it because mm -hmm. I wrote it and I couldn't be in it too. But I wrote it so that I could act it. And is that is that where you had the success? Is that yeah. Where, okay. Yeah. Yes, be, yes, because that was an off Broadway, right? I mean, that was big. It wasn't even that. It was like off off. It was a workshop. It was a workshop. It's. You see how we're like you're. The yeah. way you're speaking. I'm denigrating what it was, but okay. I'm also clarifying because it really was a workshop. Uh huh. And and how many people uh, actually has have had had that opportunity? Like, really think <laughs> about. Like, <laughs> I mean, that opportunity was beautiful and great. Yes. But we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. So you're gonna get to where you are. The fear, the anxiety is too late. I'm too old. Uh, this is what I'm feeling. Right. Those are your reality those are not to be discounted no okay those what when you when you admit those things and you're like this is really where i'm at and then have no judgment about it that's the key that's the key so as like i said circumstances are up here but, 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 but really what's the truth and the truth will always uh calm you down Like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, I feel like I'm too old. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing wrong with those thoughts. And acknowledging them will give you some sort of like, okay, this is true, now what? And I'm gonna talk about something later on, which I call um, future pacing failure. But what we're going to move into now, when you're in your reality about where you are with your acting, now we're going to transition into, 
And what's your one, one declaration that you're no longer willing to do? Um, pretend that I don't want that. There you go. <laughs> that that's not what I want to do with my retirement. Yeah. But that's not the first thing I want to pursue. Right. So in that declaration, you need to write that declaration down. We talk about this too, where you anchor it. Like you're going to write it down to where you wake up and you see it and you're reminded. So once you've assessed like where you're at, the thing that is next important, and you're gonna go and uh, declare a high vision. So the next step is to declare a high vision. And this, I have found that many people have a hard time with this. And I think that because we were, you know, never given the, uh, the allowance, the, the space to, to really dream and go big with, our, with, our, with what we really want in this life. And that, you know, we were basically told you can't have that. You have to do this first before you get that. That's not possible. There's no money in that. You can't make a living off that. That's just a dream, right? So for us to do a vision is really vulnerable for us because, you know, there was a certain point where we were, we were, we were dreaming as kids and we were saying what we wanted and our parents were like, no, can't do that. So it really hits the core of us of judgment of being shut down. And it really makes us vulnerable to really, to really go big with our dreams. And like in my own life and my own coaching business, I mean, when I, when my coach said to me, okay, Amy, what's your vision? I was like, what vision? I don't make goals. I don't do goals. Cause you know, something might change and then I don't want to be stuck to a goal. That was my thing. And then she was like, no, 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 but what's your vision? What do you want for your coaching business? And I was like, well, I think, you know, what, uh, probably like 10 clients or something. Um, you know, 10 hours a, a week would be good. Go bigger, Amy. I was like, what? That's pretty, that's fine. I'm fine. You know, we're all fine. I think that's good enough. This is what we, this is how we speak to ourselves, right? Um, no, Amy, go bigger. Okay. <laughs> you know? So I had to really bring my vision up and really let go of judgment, self-judgment, self-doubt, and really just go go deep with my vision and high. Like when you do a vision, you go big. There are no, there's not even reality. Like if I, here I am here starting out in my coaching business and my vision is way over here. I have to be able to create in this moment, be vulnerable enough to really create the vision that's over here. And that's scary. So, do you want to create a vision around your acting? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I have a really high vision. I already know what it is. Okay. So tell it's me your so vision. crazy. It's completely crazy. I want to have a regular role on the show Yellowstone because I love horses and I want to go to Wyoming. All right. So tell me about that. What, what, what does it look it's like? completely insane. I mean, I'm obsessed with the show and, um, and I think the acting is superb and I love the one woman that's on it and I really like the writing mm -hmm. and I like the values and I think it's really interesting and it asks really great questions. So I have like a, an alignment with the subject matter and um, and I really miss being around nature and they they film, you know, in, in Montana and Wyoming. Um, and, uh, and I think I'm really right for that show actually, because I'm okay. kind of very earthy and, but I'm older and they hire all these really young girls who are like rodeo riders. So, so this is like, your vision. This is your yeah. vision. So, so the thing about the vision is you don't go <laughs> out of your vision. So. Okay. 
your vision what happens you go to the audition tell me about the audition when you go and audition and get that role what happens at the audition um i bring my best self if, if i actually just brought my ability i think i would book it and what are you wearing um jeans <laughs> what else um something form fitting that's uh, a good color what color works for you uh red's always good but i can do blues and greens too mm -hmm. so pick um, one you're gonna pick what 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 color shirt are you gonna walk in with red great and you're gonna walk into their office and what's gonna happen you you go in there put yourself in that situation tell me about it um I'm calm and looking good or what? What are you looking like? You're looking good. Oh. What are you doing? Yeah. I, yeah. I look good. I, I don't know. This is really hard to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like, I don't know. Okay. Forget that. Um, what's the question? So you're walking in, you're wearing your red shirt. What, how are you feeling? What are you looking like? Are you confident? Are you calm? What's going on? You're walking in through the doors. Yeah. And I'm, and there's a lot of, maybe there's other women that don't look anything like me waiting outside mm -hmm. and it's now my turn and I don't pay any attention to that because I can't be them. I'm just going to be me. So I'm just going to go in and be me. And so sitting, you walk in, you know, there's going to be a stool that you're going to have to sit on for the, or, or the green yeah. screen, right? It's all yeah. there. The camera's set up. Tell me about that room. I don't, I don't know. I haven't done an audition like that ever. So this I don't is know. a vision. So I don't know what it looks like. We've seen TV shows, right? So this is a vision. Okay. So uh, the, the idea is that when you, in a vision, and if you listen, if you listen back to this, you're going to hear it because everything you're telling me is matter of fact, uh. or is you're telling me what it can't be. You're going into that okay. or you're telling me, you know, what you think you know, what you think it might be in these facts of like, but the idea of a vision is you're not in reality. That's like fact based. Um, so it's, it's just like, like improv, like you, you know, you use your imagination. Imagine. You're an actor. Imagine you use that. You use that, the, your senses to create a world that you truly desire. Okay. Because if you, when you replay this, all those sentences, our reality is here. And I, I say this, our reality is at eye level. That's all, all these facts, all these things you can't have, all these, these are the things that are like right here, that in your face all the time. Our vision is up here and we never go there. Yeah. We never go there. But what's in between here and here? I don't know. That's the beauty. That's where all the stuff is. That's where all the change is. You can't change when you're here. Yeah. You're just stuck in limitations. You're stuck in um, beliefs. You're stuck in facts. Yeah. Because that's what we're told is important. Sure. And when you're stuck like that, you can't go here. So then the opportunity to get there never arises. So whether it's your career, your relationship, your uh, fun and leisure, if you're like stuck here, you can't ever get here. In fact, your brain won't allow you to go there. Because your brain wants to be safe. Like, this is your comfort zone. Well, you no know one's going to look like me in the room. I don't know. I've never been there. I've never done it. That That's your comfort zone. 
your vision is outside of your comfort zone, which is why it's hard for us to go there. Yeah. And that's like, for me, I'm going to unmute you. Like for me, when my coach said, you know, that's go, go bigger. 10 clients go bigger than 10 clients a week. And I was like, that was out of my comfort zone. That means I had to do the work. That means I had to show up. That means I had to be vulnerable to failure. Yeah. That meat, right? But that's where all this is, all the good stuff. And visions for leadership and for your even brain plasticity is all important because uh, it gets us out of our, our, our reality. Like reality is overrated, <laughs> okay? And I teach this in dance. Reality is overrated. I'm not impressed by your limitations. I believe that wholeheartedly and we are too much of, into our facts and our realities so that we can't even see what's even possible for us. It's because it's outside of our comfort zone and we don't want to be vulnerable. So yeah, I mean, for me to create that vision in my business, yeah, I had to invest in a program. Yes, I had to do stretches of, for myself to take me outside of my comfort zone that I had never done before. Yes, I had to invest money. Yes, I had to like, um, you know, just wake up feeling just anxious and like frustrated in my business, but had to do it anyways, because my vision was here and my why is there. And it's very important why I have this business. So work on that vision and take it beyond one show. Or uh, Yoko, like take that vision into your business. And you're, when you rewatch this, you'll hear yourself talking about, I'm like, reality is, doesn't belong in a vision. We live in reality every day. So we have this reality here and we have a vision here, which means, you know, there's a gap here. Like I said, like here's our reality, here's our vision, and then there's this gap. So this gap is called, on this one is bridging the gap. So where you're at now and where you wanna be in your vision, you fill that gap with strategies. You fill that gap with um, mindset, you fill that gap with um, ways to really change your behavior with actionable steps. So like, I'm gonna take where I was with my relationship, right? My relationship was chaotic, uh, where I was with the three kids, uh, the ex-wife and me. And my, I wanted peace. My high vision was to have a peaceful family. So what did that mean? What did I have to do to have that peace? So then you start strategizing things. And I think that what happens is that in our life, if you start, we do the same things over and over again. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like we think that, we don't, but we do. We do this, we react the same, we think the same, we uh, do the same every, over and over and over, which is why we don't change. And what happens when you bridge the gap, you interrupt that, 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 that continuous, we're doing the same thing over and over. I mean, how many times have you said the same sentence to your partner? 
over and over. How many times have you said the same thing to yourself over and over? How many times did you say, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and work on my business over and over and then don't. So we do the same things over and over, which is why you have to interrupt it and build a bridge. So, so like uh, for me, I, I was in this chaotic situation and then I wanted peace. So what did that mean? Well, that mean I had to let go of judgment about his ex-wife. I had to not judge her, even though he wanted me to. Even though he wanted me to get in on the judgment party about how bad she was or how, how irritating she was. But if I did that, that means that I would continue the chaos and I would not feel peaceful. So I had to make, okay, how, how can I interrupt this? And I thought, well, I'm just going to let her be who she, I'm not going to judge anything. And when he comes to me with wanting that, the complaints, I'm just going to say, you know what? You know, this is not a good conversation for me to have. You married her. You had these three beautiful children with her. We have to love her. We have to find a way to be peace, peaceful with whatever complaint you're having. And when she does have a complaint, we have to say, yeah, well, she's just trying to protect her children. Or yeah, she's just trying to, you know, solve this problem. And, you know, he used to get like frustrated with me, but I was like, I need peace, son. I can't have this in my house. So what, what, what can we do to, to help her out? So I had to change the languaging. I had to come at it from love. I had to like figure out to take my vision and make that the most important thing in my life. When things were getting like confrontational, I had to get in the middle and say, you know what? This is not serving anyone. Let's just take a minute, calm down so we can have a conversation. I had to go in there and do that because I needed peace in my family. So the bridging the gap is to make loving choices and choices that, you know, and the thing about it is it's good. Like bridging the gap is a strategic uh, process. You are strategizing how to interrupt the behavior that you do every day that keeps you from having your vision. So maybe in business, Yoko, like, um, you know, uh, where you're at reality, but your vision's here. Uh, the middle part is to implement things to do so you get to your high vision. So it could be as easy as like, um, you know, advertising more. And if you're, if you're advertising more and I say that to you, like advertise more. And then you say to me, but it costs money. I can't do it. Right. Like then we'd work through that and figure out it's like, how do we, there's always something telling us that we can't do it. Which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So if we were to bridge that gap, you want to bridge that gap a little bit, Melissa, and try to like where you're at now and then your vision? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. So, so pick something that you, that's like, pick one set, like one thing about where you're at now. Um, 
what do you mean related to what we've been talking about yeah um, the first exercise were like your reality about your your acting yeah so are you saying like a, an actionable thing that i could do not yet like oh. we're, so like you were saying i'm too i'm i i haven't i put it on hold for such a long time i'm yeah. too old i'm not you know all those realities well um and so what am I, what do you want me to do now is fantasize about how to. No, I want you to give me one reality about you. And I just one reality. I, I don't, I'm very disconnected from the business. Okay. I'm very disconnected from the business. That's like your reality here. That's real. Yeah. And your vision is. To be very active in the business. Oh well, yeah. So your vision is to have this um, business life, right? In the business. So we would bridge that gap. You're disconnected. Let me just write it down so I... You're disconnected from that and what? I'm disconnected from the industry and how things even, who the, who the casting directors are and how, like I don't even know what the protocol is for headshots anymore. <laughs> I'm out of it. Right. So what else what else comes up? Uh uh You're disconnected from your business. From yeah. the business, sorry. From the business, yeah. Um and that's fixable, it's all fixable, but um what else? I don't have headshots. Mm -hmm. Current headshots. Current headshots. What else? Um I don't have an agent. Okay, what else? Um You're disconnected from the business. I'm not even sure what my um, brand is. Okay. Anymore. I don't know whether to cut my hair or not cut my hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, that's all I can think of right now. Okay. So that's kind of where, that's where you're at now with your thoughts. Yeah. And once you create your high vision about where you want to be, right? You start bridging the gap. So if I was coaching you, I would say, oh, okay. So who, and you put this, um, in your reality because it's like these real, these realities you just told me, like you said, are fixable, but not when they're all combined together in your head, all of a sudden they become something so huge, right? They become this obstacle from your, to your vision. So this is why writing them down and like itemizing them is so important. Cause when you clump all those together, you get overwhelmed and you get stuck. So, okay, let's talk about this. You don't, you know, it would just be for this would be like, you don't know who the casting directors are. Well, what could you do? Let me unmute you. Yeah, I think I did that. Okay. Um, and I don't, I don't even know where to find that out. I guess I can Google it because there used to be a Samuel French bookstore and it's closed and you should be able to get a book that told you who cast everything. Yes, I'm now so we're, we're, in, we're in 2020. I know, and I don't know how any of it operates anymore. Okay, so... I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how it operates. Watch that sentence. That sentence is a sentence that will keep you from having your vision. I don't yeah, know how. Out. So, why does it keep me? Did you meet yourself? Sorry. Yeah. So that one sentence, for everybody out there will keep you stuck for so long. So do you do research for your education? Do you do research? Yeah. Yeah. As an educator, do you know how to research? Yeah. I mean, I don't, yes, yes. 
you know how to find out about different plays and about music. You know, you know how to find out about different choreographers. You know how to find out about different theaters, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as an educator, most educators are pretty good researchers. So I would say to you, be that researcher. Take, it's not about the outcome, it's about find, discovering. And when you go back to the past of how things used to be that aren't relevant anymore, you're really digging a deep ditch. And you, you know, you take your qualities, I'm a researcher. So when I say to you, uh, Melissa, as a researcher, can you, can you actually, if I say to you as an employer, uh, can you do research on who's, who, who's the casting directors? And can you do research on how, on headshots, how much they cost? Can you do re, if your employer asked that of you, if your school institution asked that of you, would you do it? Of course. So we have to, we have to ask, we have to be that, like, that's what the high vision, I always say the high vision is like a work document. So when, when I, if I was to go to work and someone would have said, Amy, here's the, uh, here's the rules. I'd be like, okay, no, no coffee breaks. No, you know, I have to be in, I have to be at work by 12. I have to punch out by 1230. That's all I think half an hour. You know, I would follow those rules, right? Easily. When they tell you something at the college, you can't do this. You're like, okay, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that for ourselves. That's very true. So our high vision, we have to write it out so we know that's the rule. That 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 is the um what do they call those things? I don't know, protocol or whatever, right? They, when you go into a work institution, what are those things called? I don't, I don't work in this. <laughs> but something that like all the employees have to follow these rules. Yeah. Your vision should be that. So you're like, okay, my vision is to have this TV show and to do this and that. Well, I need to find out this information. So my vision is asking me to be a researcher. Mm -hmm. And then you go in there as a researcher and you find these things out. Oh, I know what that's called. All those rules at school, they're called administrative regulations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these will be my personal administrative regs. Yes. For my because vision. You, you would never question. No, they're not optional. Neither is your vision. Love you that. Neither is your vision. And this is where we get caught up because we're willing to break the rules on our vision for ourselves, but we're not willing to break the rules for anyone else. That is, has to change. That is the worst. That you are, are giving your life to someone else versus, you know, really honoring who you are. So your vision is, it's very important that you have your vision written out. So you understand you have your rules and regulations. Okay. And if you're here in this reality and you're here in this vision, what do you have to do to get, fill this gap? So I would say for you, you need to put yourself in the role of researcher. This is not about you, Melissa. If you make it about you, you won't do it. If you go in and like, huh, I wonder what the industry is. I wonder what kind of brand I could be. Like if you make it fun and you go in as a researcher and not as an, a struggling actor, an actor trying to get something, right? A disconnected actor. I'm, you know, I've been out of the business for so long. You can't come in like that and figure stuff out. Yeah. You come in like, I'm just gonna research. I'm gonna research this industry. 
use your academic brain. And then you're going to find out all kinds of great things. And then you can start bridging that gap. Mm -hmm. So that's just like one suggestion I would give you to bridge that gap to take you to the next level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is super helpful. It makes perfect sense. You're so right. I mean, everything that you just said is completely accurate. I'll do it if it's a job. Because <laughs> I'm super obedient. <laughs> I just have to pretend it's not for me. Sadly, for right now. Yeah. Right now. And you come at it as researchers are not attached to the outcome. They're just trying to find information. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move on to where am I at? Bridging that gap is where we are. Okay, so we're going to go on to um, the next phase, which is ways to take committed action now. So I actually, with the bridging the gap also, I gave you one strategy to take committed action now. Um, that one is not in your workbook, but what you can do is um, find an accountability partner. That's like huge. So accountability partner could be your sister, your friend, um, it could be anyone who's going to just be like, hey, did you get that? Did you get your research done on Tuesday? Like you said you were right. So you put, you tell people, Hey, uh, your sister, let's say Naomi, can you, I would love for you. I really want to bridge this gap in my life and I really need an accountability partner. Are you willing to do that? And they might say, well, what does that involve? Just be like, whoa, you know, I might email you what I plan to do for the week. And if you can just like text me and be like, did you get it done today? Or check in with me. Are you getting this done today? How, you know, so that you are not by yourself. Cause I always say you can't do this by yourself. Once you're by yourself, you get overtaken by overwhelm, doubt, And, um, you know, it's really, what I've learned in this process is that it's really hard to be successful by yourself. So the other thing is that you, we talked about this the other day, uh, last one we did, uh, you can do a three to five day challenge. So like I said, I did that challenge on uh, 30 days of no TV, no music until like seven or eight o'clock at night. So that, sh that one thing shifted my business. After that, I, I made big decisions on my business. After I got rid of the Netflix, I made a huge shift. I was like, okay, it's time to now really start my, my business in my life. Um, and your challenge, um, your challenge could be fun. It doesn't have to be, you know, stressful. It could be, you know, like what, what challenge could you give yourself, Melissa? like a three to five day challenge. Look up a casting director of a show that I like each day. Make it easy, make it fun. I'm going to start easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing. It's, it's, it's important. You start, you want quick, easy wins. Yeah. Cause I can Google that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I guarantee you, once you start, you're going to keep digging. Yeah. The other thing you should do, uh, you can do uh, to take committed action now is to write a not to do list. <laughs> what is that? So sometimes, you know, we give our time away to people who don't benefit us or activities who take us that take us away from our vision. 
So like for me, my vision was to have this business, three level business, uh, and a speak being a speaker, right? Now that vision is here. My reality was here uh, this a couple of years ago. And then, um, I had to make a not to do list meaning like, okay, I am not going to be sidelined by that per I'm not going to let, like, I, I might say like, I'm not going to watch Netflix, which I did with the three to fight the 30 day challenge a not to do list. It could be a relationships. I'm not going to call my friend Beatrice because she's negative and she brings me down and she takes me off of my vision. But like some people you talk to on the phone and they create so much fear in you. Yeah. That you will not go for your vision. Like I talk to people about my vision and what I'm my career and they come at me with like, but you know, we're in COVID and people don't have money and you did it. I'm like, bye. I don't want to hear that. That's not going to serve me in my vision. Or, or, you know, years ago, people, you, you, there's only so much money you can make as a coach. What? No, there's not. Coaching, you can make as much money as you are allowing yourself to make in your vision. Don't try to squash me and tell me I can only make so much an hour. That's not true. Right? So people are there. A lot of people try to tell you about reality. Reality's here. But if I was here, I don't want to hear about here. I don't want to hear about what I can't have. How, how is that going to help me get to where I want to be? So the not to do list is really about things that take you away from your vision that are not uh, serving you and serving your vision. And you need to write up those lists. You know, I had to get rid of friends who were no longer serving me that were sucking like all the energy out of me. And I had to get rid of, you know, guys that I were dating, that I was dating who weren't fitting into my vision anymore. Um, so there's things that like the not to do list, write it down. Because you have to protect that vision like you would protect your rules and regulation at school. You have to create a, a boundary and a protection around that. Otherwise, people will take it away from you. People will come in and tell you the realities of your situation in two seconds. So the other thing I want to say, I'm going to bring up, I think I want to, I think I want to bring up this slide, which is, oh, I went way over there. Is, do you see full screen? No. Oh my gosh, what happened? Let's go to share. So what I want to do is... Because this is something that's super important. Um, I'm going to share this. See my desktop is still... Um, and I want to say this because this is important. Three habits that will keep you from having an unstoppable life. So perfection. You know, perfection for women is so out of whack. And perfectionism doesn't belong to us. I mean, I think that's why uh, it's so uncomfortable for us and so hard on us. And for me, perfection really stopped me from, uh, I think, from a performing career. Because I was so, so invested in the perfection of the performance and the judgment afterwards that I was not even able to enjoy performing. Like performing was so uh, mentally, uh, hurtful for me because of the perfection that I put on my dancing. That linear perfection of, of just, you know, 
it has to be 100% right, you know, no mistakes, you know, all these things that really keep us contained. Keep perfection keeps us really small. Put it that way. Perfection keep kept me super small. And I will tell you right now, there's no one in this world who could say something to me that I don't say worse to myself. Like my judgment of myself back then was way worse than anyone else. Like anyone say anything, you know, it was like on a constant basis. It wasn't good enough. I might have made a mistake. Maybe I said the wrong thing. So perfection for me was very, uh, was very, was something that really kept me small. And I think that it came from, because I grew up um, an atheist. And as atheists, it's like the only person you could rely on is you. Like there was nothing higher. It was me in reality, that was it. And my reality was so hard. I was like so hard on myself. Uh, but once I got into spirituality and got my vision up and my belief, right? This is my vision. Perfection has pretty much gone away. I've worked on that because it's not all about me now. There's someone else. There's a higher power, something bigger than me. The other thing that will keep you uh, from having an unstoppable life is time. Time is your enemy. I'll do it tomorrow. It can wait. I'll wait till the kids are grown. Uh, you know, for me, even an hour goes by and I forget what I'm supposed to do sometimes, right? So time, there's always, it's not the right time. All these things. Time is like this. Time just stops you from having the life that you truly want. And you know, it's so interesting because it's so easy to say. I'm really busy, I don't have the time. Yeah, I can't fit that in my schedule. Um, you know, this today is not good for me. That is just a block. It's just an, a block to keep you from your vision. It's a block to keep you from vulnerability. It's a block to keep you from love. It's a block to keep you from a really beautiful life. And I can't say this, this, I can't say this, you know, I have to keep saying this over and over because people are, are used to using time as an excuse for not doing what they really want to do. So you will put that up on the wall. Time is my enemy. It doesn't serve me. The third thing is future pacing yourself. Future pacing yourself. Future pacing yourself to failure. I was talking to someone and they're like, you know, I want this, um, I want this house and I want to buy it and they have this beautiful house and blah, blah, blah. Dee, dee, dee. And then I asked them about their love and relationship. Well, you know, if, if I get in a relationship with this man, that, that means I'd probably have to sell my house. So they're like future pacing themselves out of relationship because they, they might have to sell the house that they don't even have yet. So it's like, <laughs> you know, you're like, and I talked, there's, I was having a conversation the other day and, you know, talking about getting out of, getting out of, re, of a relationship. This woman was getting out of a relationship and she was saying, yeah, I'm ready to be to 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 leave this relationship, but you know I can't um, I can't be involved with anyone for like twelve for like twelve years. I'm like, you're future pacing yourself to to not having being open and finding the love of your life. You're like setting up a condition in the future that's not even here that's gonna hold you back. Now for me, I went back to school uh, 2012 and got my degree. So in high school, I, in high school, I 
hated high school. I wasn't a good student in high school. All I wanted to do was dance. I mean, that was it, right? So I didn't care about my studies. Now, I, this could have been my dialogue, the opportunity to go back to college in 2012. It could have been, I could go back to school in 2012, but, you know, I'm probably not gonna do well because I didn't do well in high school. So I could have talked myself out, future paced my failure from getting my degree I could have talked myself out of it by projecting something, an experience, an idea in my head that's not even relevant. And I hear this all the time. I wanna play the guitar again, but you know, I'll never play as good as I used to play. So why do it? Like you're taking like this desire for something and you're future pacing a failure on it. So it could be like, you know, uh, I really want to be on the show Yellowstone, right? That's my vision. I really want to go in there and rock it out. Da, 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 da. This is what I want to do. But you know what? They're not going to go for me because I'm too old. You're like future paid. You're putting yourself in a situation that is, hasn't even happened. You're already like saying no to something that's not even happening. You're future pacing your failure. And I think that, you know, we have to be very careful of that. Well, you know, I want this business and I want to be successful, but uh, I've never, I don't have experience with marketing. And, you know, so I don't know what to do. You're talking yourself out of, you're talking yourself into failure. So yeah, I could have said, you know what? I wanna go back to college, but I'm really, I'm probably gonna fail. I'm probably not gonna be good at it. So why bother? I could have said it. We say things like that all the time. But you know, I graduated with a 3.875 GPA, right? I didn't get stuck in that future pacing of, of um, failure. I did not talk myself out of it. I went in there with curiosity. I didn't even know if I was gonna do well or not. I didn't care. I'm like, I just need to do this. So. These three habits are, 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 are um, you know, something you need to really, really, and you know, one of your challenges would be like, how many times uh, for three days, how many times can I catch myself future pacing myself to failure? That's a fun challenge. Or, and then also be like, oh, how many times do I hear other people future pacing themselves? To failure because once you start you're like once the lingo goes I mean I hear it all the time from people and that can only benefit you so today what did we do we did a lot we uh, here's what we covered we did the get the real uh, get real with your unstoppable life assessment and I would say, get real honest with yourself and don't worry. You have a better than other people. That's not how you do it. Go really get real with yourself. Then we got into how to declare your uh, high vision. This is, you know, something you should really develop and find the freedom and the fun and the curiosity to really, to really develop that uh, technique. So you can put it in all areas of your life. Uh, I got strategies to get you unstuck and to build a bridge to your unstoppable life. And then ways to take committed action now. You can do the three to five day challenge, get a, a, an accountability partner, do a not to do list, 
and then do easy, quick, easy wins. That's four. So then three habits that will keep you from having an unstoppable life. Time, future pacing to failure, perfection. And um, so that's, that's the Design Your Unstoppable Life workshop. I'm so happy that you guys uh, stayed to the end. Oh my and, God, that's great. Thank yeah. you. And does anyone, do you have any more questions or any way I can support you in uh, next steps or do you have any questions? I'm just trying to leave, see if Yoko wants to jump in here. Um, I don't have any questions. I feel very grateful. Um, yeah. We did a lot of work on you today, Melissa. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. Well, this is the end of our call and our workshop. And I'm going to put in here my Calendly link if you want to go a little bit deeper. And uh, why does this keep doing this? Um, we could strategize um, some bridging the gap and like really getting um, working on that. Coffee. It's a free half hour, so I would take advantage of it if you want to. Everyone, there we go. And that way we can connect and take you to the next level. Um, and yeah, this is exciting work. As I said, once I did my vision uh, and started doing um, like the challenges and stuff like that, everything like really worked for me. Everything started to really take for, like it gave me the rules and regulations kind of gives you steps to take and not take. So it really kind of gives you that that guide that we need because otherwise it's all like empty space in front of us all right so that's it i'm glad you guys came thank you for attending and um yeah i'm excited for you melissa thank you so much this was very very interesting and just like so different than how I think. So it was very useful and helpful and gave me a lot to think about. It was very generous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Make sure you watch the replay so you can like. Is that what you put in the um, chat there? No, no, that's my calendar link, but I'll, I'll send out a replay for the for oh. everyone. Yeah. Okay. But... I'll probably be horrified. Okay, but I will watch it. <laughs> well, you, I think you only see me, but you'll hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes. Right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, ladies. Bye. We'll Have see you. Thank evening. you. Thank you. Bye, Yoko. Bye. 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 Thank you, Amy. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Bye. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs>